Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel, I should say. Um, today's gonna be a little bit different, not gonna vlog. Today I'm actually gonna make a list for you. Um, it's actually my seven ways to be a better athlete. So obviously athletics has been a huge part of me and Caroline's lives uh, since we've been young, um, but if I kind of knew this information back then, it would have been a lot of help. So I just want to share with you guys what I kind of think will help you guys out in the athletic journey. So the first one, number one, is know your body. So you need to know what works for you, because um, we're all not built the same. So you need to know what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Last year in my training, um, we actually started doing a couple days on and then I have a day off in the middle of the week. I know a lot of track and field athletes just go Monday to Saturday uh, or Monday to Friday, but because I'm a little bit more injury prone, I get a little bit more sore than others. We just took a day in the middle on Wednesday to kind of regroup. After that rest day, it's a little bit easier to push harder on those next days. If you're getting really sore, you might need an extra rest day. If you're not really seeing the results, you might need to up your training a little bit to an extent, um, but yeah, just kind of remember what works for you and what doesn't. Also what goes along with that point is to listen to your body. So if you're sore, then that is telling you that you need a little bit more food maybe, or you need to stretch a little bit more. Um, and if something hurts, just listen to it. And that's your body telling you to say, okay, back off a little bit. Taking one day off isn't gonna ruin your whole career. Um, it's better to be 100% healthy and 80% prepared than 80% healthy and 100% prepared. Okay, so number two is nutrition. Uh, nutrition is such a big factor in sports. It's, has, has anyone seen that picture of like the iceberg and it's like performance and then underneath the water, it's a bunch of stuff. So nutrition is probably the biggest chunk of that. You can put all your effort into training and if you come home and just don't eat or eating the wrong things or not hydrating, then it's all going to waste. When you're making those gains, it's not really in the gym or on the track, it's after. When you're eating, that's when your body repairs everything and gets ready for the next day. So that's when you need to be focusing on what you're eating, when you're eating, um, what you're drinking, when you're drinking. So it's a lot more than just eating healthy. And yeah, it's just such a huge factor that I can't even explain to you how much it is. So just read into an, a couple articles. It takes two seconds to just kind of sit down and read through it and just know kind of what's in your food and what you need to get for your body type and your sport. Number three is a pretty big one as well. It's sleep. It kind of goes along with uh, nutrition and know your body. Um, sleep is such a huge factor. Uh, there's been countless articles that I've read that says sleep is the number one thing that you could do to recover. So just trying to get at least seven to eight hours. I know everyone's pretty busy and when you're younger, I know a lot of people can get distracted, playing video games, watching TV. There's probably been times when you've been training and you kind of feel really sore and then you don't really get a good sleep and you wake up and you feel the exact same way. That's because you didn't sleep enough. The nights that you sleep really well, you wake up, you feel completely refreshed, not that sore, ready to go for another training session. It's because you got a lot of sleep. It's pretty simple. Just go to bed earlier, wake up a little bit later if you can, and you're gonna make the gains that you want to make. Okay, so number four is be open to change. So if you're doing the exact same thing every single day and it's not working for you, or you're not getting the results that you want, why keep on doing the exact same thing over and over and over again? I understand that change takes time, but if you've given it time, you have to be open to changing it up a little bit. Uh, the biggest thing for me was when I switched to the decathlon. So I was a world junior medalist in long jump, um, and then my PB was 790 outdoors. So that's pretty close to the Olympic standard, um, but I wasn't getting the results that I wanted, and then I gave it a couple years, still wasn't getting the results that I wanted, so I switched. 
Um, it was a huge change from doing long jump to now doing the decathlon. I was open to change and now I've made another Canadian team for the decathlon um, and I'm getting even closer to that Olympic standard and that world championship standard. And if I wasn't open to change, if I was kind of stuck in my ways of just being a long jumper, then I would have never had this opportunity. It's your life and it's your career. So you have to take control of it. I know a lot of people kind of get stuck in their ways and people like routine, but you only have one life, so you have to kind of take control of it. Just be open to change, that's all I'm saying. Number five um, is to be able to disconnect. So when I say disconnect, I mean be able to go to practice, put your whole effort into it, um, and then when you come home, just be able to relax and not think about it. When I was younger, track was the biggest thing in my life. It still, it still is, but Back then I wasn't able to shut my mind off. So I would go to practice and then I'd come home and just watch videos of track and you'd just all be track and then go to bed, wake up, and then just like do it all over again. Uh, so now for me it's kind of doing vlogs and just so I can think about something else other than track 24 seven. Um, it kind of lets your mind reset. You can get excited for track the next morning again. So. If you're always thinking about it, you can get kind of run down and then you're just not excited to be there because that's all you've done for the whole week is just only think about track or only think about football or whatever your sport is. So um, have a little hobby, whatever it is, reading, playing video games, yeah, just something else. Okay, so number six is pretty big too. Um, it's ask questions. Um, there is a proper time to ask questions and not a proper time to ask questions. Like when you're actually doing something in the middle of practice, maybe don't ask questions about why you're doing it, but maybe after be like, hey coach, uh, we did this today. Why, why did we do that? Like what's the reason? So you can kind of wrap your head around why they want you to do it. So when you're at practice and they just tell you to do a drill, you can do it perfectly fine, but it, it's better to know why you're actually doing that drill. So asking questions is a huge part of my kind of training now, because if you mentally get why you're doing it or what it's supposed to look like, then it's gonna stick with you a lot more than you just kind of doing it. So your coaches are there to kind of help you out um, and they wanna spread their knowledge. So just kind of be a student to the sport and just be willing to ask questions. Okay, and number seven, I think is the biggest one. Um, it is training when nobody's there. It is very easy to train with a group of people uh, because you have somebody there to motivate you, but everybody finds it a lot more difficult to train by themselves. So let's say we're doing a hill workout, 10 times up the hill. So when you're with somebody, it's a lot easier to just kind of go with them because you can push them for one, they can push you for one, and back and forth, back and forth. But if you're the only one there, it is a lot harder to get your butt up that hill. Training when nobody's there was pretty difficult for me when I was uh, younger, but last year was the first year that I had a lot of my workouts by myself. Um, and not just technical workouts, those long, hard workouts that nobody really wants to do. But every practice that I had by myself, I got a little bit better at pushing myself, a little bit better. It just kind of makes you a little bit more mentally strong. So you can be physically strong, um, but when you get to that big game, or big track meet, if you're not mentally strong, that's when people kind of choke. You're not used to talking to yourself in your mind, calming you down, hyping you up. So just be able and willing to train by yourself. Don't slack, just push yourself as hard as you can and you'll make great gains. So those were my seven ways to be a better athlete, in my opinion. Those are not proven at all. That is just coming from me and what I've learned in my athletic journey. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something new. Subscribe if you want to see a little bit more. If you want to see something specific, just kind of comment below and I can see what I can do. If you want to see what I eat in a day or what Caroline eats in a day, just something different, just comment below. Always looking for ideas and more video options. So thanks for watching. See you guys later.